Welcome to the Crypto Campfire. They're tastier than Thanksgiving leftovers. Mitch and the Professor. Featuring special guest, J Mac. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Campfire Podcast. This is the Professor. And Mitch. And today we're going to be talking to our buddy, J-Mac. J-Mac was the first guest on the Crypto Campfire Podcast. A uh, real good friend, and we're really looking forward to uh, doing this round two. It's been a long time coming. But before we start talking to J-Mac, let's grab that crypto news from the Crypto Gent. Thanks, Professor. And welcome, everybody, to the Cryptocurrency News in a Flash with the Crypto Gent. Reports that Binance's Shanghai office has closed in crypto crackdown. Binance delays police raids. A lawyer is found guilty of money laundering for one coins. Crypto Queen. That's the cryptocurrency news in a flash with the crypto gent. It's back to you, Professor. Thanks a lot, crypto gent. Mitch, this is going to be a good one. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, it's it's kind of surreal to think that this was like 50 podcasts ago. That yeah, J Mac was on. Seriously, 50, 50 <laughs> like long, when we exact. first crazy. started. Yeah, this is crazy, isn't it? So, is it fifty or fifty-one? I'd we be just curious released, to know because it's... we just released number fifty-two. So technically, oh, this is. Okay. Oh, actually, you know what? That's wrong because we're going by releases, but we actually have like four more that we need to release. So this is probably going to be like fifty-six. Okay. Something like okay. that. Okay. So it's been, right. cool. it's been a while. Cool. It's been yeah. more than fifty episodes. Right. That's pretty awesome. I'm ex- I'm excited for this one. Oh, yeah. So uh, we got, what, a week until LA? Eight days? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes. And I'll be working my ass off every day until then. <laughs> <laughs> you got you to gotta make up for it. We're going we're gonna to have a good time. So you're going to need to fill those bags up before we get to LA. Exactly. Exactly. And that's what I'm thinking. And, I'm, and my hopes are... My hopes are that while we're in LA, this market does a little flip flop and gives us a little love. That'd be beautiful, wouldn't it? We're, we're gonna have some fun in LA. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited for it. That's gonna be awesome. And we got Litecoin Summit. Oh yeah, oh yeah. A week after Vegas. Yep. Or a week after LA. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, October is gonna be off the hook, bro. And then Halloween's right there during WCC. I don't know when you're going back, but I'm staying till Saturday or Friday, I think. Oh yeah, I'm coming back so, on Wednesday because I gotta I gotta take the kids out for Halloween. Oh yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. I should just bring them to Vegas, but <laughs> it's kind of fortunate. I don't know. It's it's a double edged sword, you know. I'm excited that I don't have to do that anymore, but at the same time, you miss those days. Yeah, but so. you're gonna be going trick or treating with some of the craziest kids. <laughs> you're not <laughs> just, kidding. Just wait. Oh my god, wait. wait. Can you imagine trick or treat in Vegas? <laughs> oh, oh, dude. No, stop. You this know, you know somebody crazy. who would make an amazing trick or treat partner? <laughs> no. J Mac. Oh yeah. 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 All right. Speaking of J Mac. <laughs> no, seriously though, think about that. Three of us going out on the town in Vegas, trick or treating. I don't think J-Mac's oh. going to be there, but... Uh, I could think of 10 of us going out on the town trick-or-treating. There's going to be an amazing time, either way. But, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, fucking A. Before, we, we're getting lost. we got rabbit holes coming. We're, get, we're getting excited. J-Mac, welcome to the show. Let's, let's get you in here and, and have some fun. Hey, guys. How you doing, man? Good, man. We're glad to have you on the show. Man, I, I am totally stoked to be back on this show. And I just want to say congratulations on what you guys have done. Uh, it sounds like you guys are 50 plus episodes deep and, uh, you guys have done a great job and I'm glad that everybody loves you because, uh, I think you guys are super talented and I'm glad to be back. Man, that means so much. That's to us. Awesome. Thank you for that. It's, it's, uh, we weren't sure what to expect going into the first episode of having a guest, right? You know, Mitch, I don't know what that was like for you, but for me, it was like, what, <laughs> what are we going to do? You know, like what right. the fuck are we going to talk about? How is this going to work? Is it going to be terrible? Is it going to be really awkward? Right. But if I remember right, it went pretty freaking amazing. Yeah, it was like we just connected to the call, and then it was just like three friends having a good time, and it was amazing. Sitting around so, the campfire. So J-Mac, you really helped beer. ease the tension of the first steps, and, and I think you're a big part in the success of this because not only for that reason, but you're always talking of the campfire. You're always bringing in new people. Always. Man, you are off the hook. We love you for that, man. Well, that's awesome, man. I, uh, like I said, um, even, even all the guests that you guys have had, you guys had amazing guests. It was something that 
I mean, some of the guests that you guys have had have just blown my mind that, uh, you know, I can tell people like, yeah, they had this guest on there. And, uh, you know, I was a guest on there as well. That's kind of neat, isn't it? I mean, you know, it, to think back of all the podcasts that we've done, I, it's hard to find a favorite, really. I mean, they're all, they're all unique in their own way, and they all have the individuality of the guests that we have on the show. And none of them flow exactly the same way. They all flow in a different direction and they all pretty much talk about different topics and different avenues, um, different areas of cryptocurrency and different personalities. Right. So it just, it keeps it vibrant, I think. And we we've always said this from the beginning. It doesn't matter if you got five followers on Twitter, if you're not into crypto, if you're got 5 million and followers on Twitter. It doesn't matter to us, right? Because it's about you. It's about the, the person, but what you bring that causes all those followers, or that's about what you bring that people need to see to get you more followers so that you can share your experience with everyone. And that's, that's what I think is beautiful about this podcast is having that ability to put it out there for many, many, many people to see and hear. Yeah. And that's what I love about your guys' platform. You guys give the opportunity for everybody to introduce themselves to what's going on on Twitter and on other platforms, you may be uh, not be able to express yourself as well because you're following a certain um, line of thought. But instead, if you want to actually talk to these people, you get to know that they're normal people and uh, we're all different, which is what makes this perfect. The diversity in the crypto space too, just like from, from a mindset and background standpoint is incredible. Yeah, it is incredible. Especially with like Twitter has, you know, allowed all of us to meet. Um, I talked to so many people in DMS. It's, uh, it's a little bit humbling. Um, I've talked to, you know, CEOs of companies. I've talked to uh, founders of coins. I've talked to project directors and that's just something that we, we all have to incorporate with what's happening. We're all in this together and we're all a little bit different. So let's, you know, get to know each other and let's work together. Well said, man. Well said. Speaking of working together and all that, have you seen, I shouldn't say, have you seen, what do you think of the seed card movement that's happening? Oh, the seed card movement movement is awesome. It's something that, uh, it was so needed in this space. All these tribes of coins that were, irritated with each other it all has to end it's about moving forward with this movement and the seed cards are going to do this you're going to have people that uh are going to pass it out to every different person they know and you got different coins you got different people you got different choices so this is what's going to help this whole space move forward there is something really important to be said for anything that brings awareness to somebody who's not already in the space because all of, we have a lot of efforts that we're, you know, doing to try and, and spread awareness, but a lot of them are targeted at uh, the actual usage of cryptocurrency, which is more targeted towards people in the space. And there's, there's not a lot of stuff out there that really helps bring new people in that just have not heard of crypto at all. And finding a, a card just laying somewhere or pinned on a board, you know, sure, a lot of people are going to ignore it and write it off. Some are going to pick them up and then never do anything with them again. But if you can change like one single life, right, doesn't it make it worth it? So the more and more we get out there, the more people are going to be brought into the space. And then we have more people to, uh, like we said before, come in and be part of that contribution and, and help build this space. Absolutely. And like what Mitch, was, Mitch tweeted out earlier, um, they have, I mean, anybody can do this. This isn't like uh, some people can't do a podcast. Some people don't want to do video. Some people, you know, are worried to talk about this to, you know, cashiers and what have you. That's fine. This is something everyone can do. You can get a seed card for, for your favorite currency and give it to somebody. Hang it on a board. Slide it into a 12-pack of Pepsi while you're at the store. I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> but <laughs> it's a way so everybody can find this. And you're going to be surprised how many people will find this and check it out. You know, when you, when you have that first interaction 
from handing some hand, physically handing somebody or talking to somebody about crypto and it's and it's actually received they they know nothing about what you're saying they know nothing about it they some people i've talked to have never even heard of it and i'm blown away by that and then there's some that are like like that guy i gave that seed card to at the restaurant or at the fast food place the other day he was like oh my god i've been trying to get into this and i didn't know how and he's like you know and I said, well, here, you know, I gave him all the information and gave him a, a crypto campfire card. And I said, shoot me an email, bro. We'll be happy to lead you in the right direction, get you set up and, you know, get you set up with a wallet, whatever. I said, reach out to me. And he's like, oh, I definitely will. You know, it was, it was a really positive experience, you know, a unique one. So much so that I had to do a video while I was driving away from it and got yelled at by Rhonda. <laughs> for doing the video while I was moving in my vehicle, but you know what? She's like, "Sorry, Ronda." She says that was really neat, but you know what, right? You know what I'm gonna say? I'm like, "Yes," and I put a little sad face in there. I've been doing so good. That's <laughs> good. Uh, so yeah, it's it. You know, when you actually have that positive experience, it blows you away, and it just gives you so much more fuel for that fire. It's crazy. I mean. Seriously, it's like taking a blowtorch that's just at a trickle flame and then all of a sudden you got this bright blue flame going and you're like, yeah, let's do this. So once people experience that, they feel the passion we're putting out on Twitter and that's pretty awesome in itself, you know, let alone once they do it themselves to feel that energy is just crazy. Yeah. And like the passion that they, we can put out on Twitter, it, uh, it expands but when I watched you do it in person, I watched you do this. And uh, you can see that look in their eye, that feeling when uh, you know they're getting it. And I've watched you. You're a master at, at this point, Mitch. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> That's a fact. I don't know. It, He's it's a just. You know, Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, let me take that back. You know, I, there was a, a, a guy on Twitter. Um, reached out to me in a DM and this really blew me away. And uh, I'm so modest sometimes. I don't like to, I like to be out there spreading the news and spreading the word, right? But I don't necessarily like to be the focal point of the recognition for it. So when, when you receive comments and when you receive positive feedback from people, you know, compliments, sometimes it's hard to take just because you don't view it in the same eyes as other people do, right? So this guy reaches out to me in a DM and he's like, you don't realize your gift because you can, you are able to take a conversation with anybody and make it positive and come out of it with just this beautiful thing garnered by it. And he said, and that's a rare talent that a lot of people don't have. And you know, he's like, you keep hearing this stuff, but why do you think? It's because it's true. And it's hard for me to accept that, but I see where, I see where the comments and the, and the compliments are coming from. And it's just me doing me, me being me, right? Like Clint says, you do you, and that's all I'm doing. And to, to have people respond to that positively is just so humbling. It really is. And, and I appreciate all that positive feedback because realistically, it gives me that much more drive to keep going. So thank you for that compliment, J Mac. You bet, brother. And like I said, this is this is all part of it. Um, you have become basically a master at this. Um, other people, this might not be their thing. That you know, maybe they they're a little more shy. This is where seed cards come in. Seed yes, cards exactly. can be anonymous. They can be, you know, just hang on a board and. You know what? It's going to bring new people in. And then we need all of us to make sure they get good direction when they come here. Exactly. So, J Mac. Yes, sir. Who's Satoshi? Who is Satoshi? Who or what, I should say, is Satoshi? Wow. This is, this is a tough one. Um, my theory is <laughs> it's actually a group of people. Um, and I think they've passed away. I think they're gone. I think they they don't have access to the million Bitcoin. Otherwise, something would have moved, and uh, you know, Craig White Wright would have been proved wrong a long time ago. But which that would have helped, by the way. That guy's so annoying. That would have been nice. <laughs> Although 
there wouldn't have been as much entertainment. Of course, a lot of people got burned by all that entertainment too, though. So, yeah, for sure, he was you know feeding everybody. Well, he still does, and I you know I shouldn't bash because I really don't know. Maybe he has some sort of affiliation to the original people. I just think that he's going to have to pay the family, and I guess we'll all find out, right? Well, we'll see. We we may never know. At the same time, I think uh, I think it's best just to kind of consider Satoshi like. Uh, a piece of enlightenment, if nothing else, you know, something that opened us up to something new and we can move on from it from there, regardless yeah. of who or what entity it truly is for real. Right. I think if, if Satoshi is anybody, it's all of us, all of us that understand and want to use cryptocurrency for the original intent to free yourself from, you know, the monetary issues that we have right now. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You know, it's uh, it's done wonders for that. And, you know, the, the biggest thing that came out of all that lawsuit crap, I think, would be the I am Satoshi hashtag movement. You know, like seeing all that support for Hobblenot and that and Peter and just that massive togetherness that didn't exist. And of course, you know, it kind of fell apart and we kind of gained our little clicks and stuff again in some some respects. But it's nice to see that everybody can kind of come together on a common cause at some point. You know, it's a, it's a pretty cool space. Sure. Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it's uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. I, it's just, it rolls off your tongue so nicely, you know, but you think about what has been created and you think about this whole movement, right? And there's so many facets of it. And I think to me, it's about the freedom, but the unity it's bringing to people the 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 people it's actually drawing together the 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 energies and the souls of individuals that are being bound to one another for a single purpose right i mean think about what's happening here think about what this seed movement is doing it, it's not just spreading adoption it's not just spreading the word of crypto it's uniting people for a single purpose and it's it's changing how people perceive things when they look at the communities behind it when you, people from the outside, people from other communities view what's happening centralized around or focused on, I should say, this, this seed movement, and they look at all of the positivity that just explodes from this little group, how can they not want to be a part of that? And, and it's, it's changing the world. I don't, I don't care what anybody says. In time, this will change the world. This will change how people view other people. This will change how people perceive themselves, how they'll, how they'll be more selfless, right, in my mind. And it's, obviously, it's not going to happen to everybody. But so many are going to wake up and realize and find their true inner self, find their true calling. And I, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a dreamer, but that's what I'm seeing. And that's what I'm perceiving what I see. So I, I'm just ecstatic to be a part of it, let alone be one of the larger parts of it, like Red Cat Life or Clint Westwood or Change Angel now and Mr. Trick. I mean, Mr. Trick, when, when this first all started, was like, yeah, Litecoin, Litecoin, Litecoin. And I said, and I made a few comments. And they, they positively affected him so much he he felt the need to tweet out to me and say, Mitch, thank you, because you changed my views. You changed how I perceive this space. And to me, that was so moving and so just unique. I was blown away by that comment from him. And that's what I see happening, though, J-Mac. That's, that's what I see becoming of this seed movement. So... It's it's pretty amazing. I, I just I still can't believe it's all happening like it is. Well, if you're a dreamer, man, you're not the only one, as they say. <laughs> right? <laughs> Dream bigger, go home, baby. Dream bigger, go home. <laughs> you know, I mean, man, what are we doing if not dreaming big, right? Yeah. All of crypto is about dreaming big. You know, all the potential that it carries, regardless of what sector you're talking about, whether it's financial or medical or, you know, it's like 
everything, the, the goals are so lofty. And that's why there's a lot of failures in the space is because we're all dreaming so big and there's going to be failures and there's going to be projects that don't quite make it. As we learn more and as we keep building, we're going to break through some of those walls and some of the shit that comes from it is going to just blow us away. And it's going to be the greatest thing we've ever seen. Absolutely. The, uh, I mean, the change is here. And that's one of the big things that I like about what uh, Bitcoin Ben preaches is number four that he ends every show with is dream, dream big. And that hits, hits home. I think that, that people need to realize dream big, chase your dreams, because this is part of it. And crypto is going to change the world. That is a fact. Heck That's yeah. A fact. It, it totally is. It totally is. And it's just so... Uh, it, it, it's, it, it's just so crazy. Sometimes it's hard to find the words, obviously I'm stuttering <laughs> here, but it's just, I don't know, man. I, I've, I've, I've come to touch, come in touch with myself in a different way that I've ever been. Um, and you know, someone made a comment to me the other day that this, this doesn't seem like you, this isn't you. And I'm like, but it is, you know, maybe it's just a part of me that has come to life and it, it's totally me. Um, and I'm enjoying the hell out of it. And to find this much passion, to feel this much passion towards something, I've never felt this way about anything in my life. And I mean, I love my kids to death, don't get me wrong, and my family, but this passion is unique. It's so different. This energy that I get from it is so different than anything I've ever experienced in my life. You know, I think that's why I'm so out there. You know what I'm saying? I've always been an outgoing person though. I mean, I grew up, I went to 27 different schools. So I had to meet new people all the time. My mom says, you didn't go to 27 different. And I sat there and I counted them one day with her and she about died. She's like, oh my God. And I said, yeah. <laughs> 27 schools. How many times did you do That's kindergarten, crazy. dude? I, I went to two different, I went to two different kindergartens. I went to two ah. different first grades. I went to, I went to two and three different third grades. I mean, it, it you wouldn't right believe because of moving my parents moving or, you know, divorced family moving from one to another, you know, which was kind of cool because my, my mom didn't want my dad to be that weekend father, you know? So it made me more of an outgoing person, I guess is what my point here is that because of that, I was forced to always be the guy that, or the kid that went to go meet new people because if you waited for people to come to you, you were always the new guy. That's tough, you know? So I guess that's what's helped mold me into that outgoing person that I am for sure. Well, I mean, as, as shitty as it was for you, I'm going to say you're, this right now. It's a good thing that it happened because we'd be screwed if it was just me trying to do this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, and I say the same thing about you because without your skills and that's the, that's the cool part, man, is that when people in crypto come together and work as one, it's fucking incredible what you can accomplish. It's just, there's no end to it. There really isn't. I mean, we are only limited by our passion and our imagination, period. 100%. So a little point on that, uh, what Professor can do. I had a couple technical issues that I uh, sent to him, and he was right on it. Bang, bang. So meeting some of these pe people in this space has opened up all kind of stuff that I would have never expected either. The more connections that you have and the bigger the network is, the sometimes the easier it is to accomplish stuff and be successful and make things happen because you surround yourself by people that have different skill sets. And no matter what problem you run into, then you can you have somebody you can reach out to for help. And whether it's somebody that can help you directly or whether they know somebody in their network that can, there's always somebody that can solve that problem. Whereas if you're trying to go this alone, you're going to run into these brick walls and you're not going to have the sledgehammer you need to get through it. So um, that's, that's just why we love working together and why we love uh, just building a community, right? And, and tackling things together instead of solo. And it just gives us all that ability to say, hey, I know a guy. Yeah, I know <laughs> a guy. You know, I know, I a, know guy. a guy. But you got to have Johnny Litecoin on standby to say it for you. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah you no, know sometimes i talk to johnny litecoin on the phone he called me the other day and like when we first start talking it's it's kind of hard for me not to laugh a little bit and go johnny litecoin you know 
because uh yeah he's got that voice what a great voice that's amazing yeah. it's unique I, it I love that i love people with unique voices like noir man smooth dude man oh my dude, god that guy like is like butter he's like very white he's yeah, like very no white on crack you know i mean just like hey baby yeah I mean, he's got that <laughs> just deep sultry like oh my god voice it's incredible so i cool. mean yeah okay he's in the right business <laughs> tell you he that is. much he is totally in the right business that guy is so much fun i really wish i would have had the opportunity i don't even know if he was in philly i i, I mean it, i'd be heartbroken if i knew that he was there at the at the conference and i didn't get a chance to meet him i'd be literally heartbroken That'd be terrible, but we'll have to find another one because I'm sure he, he said he's going to be trying hard to get out there and be in public and uh, talk to people and interact with people, get to conferences. I have a feeling that uh, there's going to be another one soon that we'll catch him at. Well, speaking of conferences, I got a challenge for us when we're down in Los Angeles. Okay. My, my uncle is a no coiner. Okay. He is a big person to say a lot of negative things right without having knowledge mm -hmm. we got into a conversation him and i and um that conversation like spawned a lot of controversy mm -hmm. and you could almost feel tension and but when we were all done he goes he goes give me a call sometime he says i'd really like to explore this further he's like because you obviously know what you're talking about and you know, he was going off of the little bits and pieces that he knew just based on media and, and bullshit. Right. Right. So when you, when he's like, you're, you're blown. And I think that's what really moves people is they see that energy that you have and that passion that you have for it and that belief. And they are just intrigued so much by that, regardless of what their preconceptions were, it changes their thought process. I don't care what they say. Yeah, you can really it tell the difference does. between somebody who is truly passionate about what they're trying to do and somebody who's just trying to make that $10 commission or whatever it is that they're trying to right. push off on somebody because it, it feels different, you know? You can tell, and maybe the approach might feel the same. There's a lot of people that just assume you're trying to sell them something when you try to talk to them about crypto because, it, number one, it has to do with money. The first thing that anybody assumes is that somebody's trying to either make money off of me or scam me or something because that's just how the world is, unfortunately. But when you start talking and you can actually have like a one-on-one -on -one conversation and it's less of you just like preaching it, that's when it, the magic happens. Right. When their defenses are down. Yeah. They, well, it's because like you've become friends at that point or you've at least become acquaintances and they're willing to listen to what you have to say because it's clear that you really care and you're not just trying to, to make a buck off of it. It's, yeah, it's and I always cool. make a point to tell people, I, I have nothing to gain by this monetarily. I have no, I'm not trying to sell you on anything. I'm simply trying to feed you information because that's really all we're doing. You know, and, and information is power. So I'm trying to transfer this power, this knowledge that I have and give it to you because everybody should have this power or this knowledge. Yeah, and I feel like a vested interest in myself and others that we have to find those people that are working 60 hours a week, don't have time to pay attention to what's going on. And we get five minutes to talk to them about it. So it's important for them to be able to see and understand what, what we have going on. And uh, it's not about taking their money for our benefit. It's not about, about a sales pitch. It's about understanding what's going to happen here in the future. Um, my opinion, I think we're going to, you're going to have a choice as people. You're going to either have to choose corporate money, uh, government money, or, did, or cryptocurrency money. And at that point, you could go centralized or decentralized. And I think that's what's going to happen at this point moving forward. So it's kind of about giving them some awareness of what's going to happen next. I don't know about you, but I'd rather have a currency that I could take anywhere in the world and it has the same value regardless of where I go and That'd where nice. I spend it. You know what I mean? Instead of having to exchange your money for that country's money or, or, a, or a currency that's accepted in that area, if you didn't have to do that and just could, just could use this. Now, now since we're on this topic, I, I did want to touch on this with you, J-Mac, because we had a conversation the other day with one of our um, podcast guests about what they thought of adoption and what they thought about spending crypto. And they were so shut off from 
spending crypto and that it's so far away to where we are so far away from that point. And it just really struck me as odd how, how they thought it was so far, far fetched to think that spending crypto now will help impact the adoption of it. And I, I struggle with that because if I'm up, if I'm in the green and I have an opportunity to use Bitcoin, like I just did on a couple of airline tickets, yeah, those might be some expensive airline tickets one day, but if I'm going to spend that money anyways, so let's say I spent 300 bucks on airline tickets, I used cryptocurrencies. Okay, it's, it's going down a little bit more even since I paid for those. So guess what? I have an opportunity to put that money that I spent, that crypto that I spent back into crypto, right? So what am I out? I'm actually further ahead because I just made money on that and I didn't even have to trade it. Yeah, absolutely. I, this, this is currency, man. Um, it's about uh, backfill if you want to spend it, but you got to spend it. You got to understand the power of it. And until you spend it, you'll never get it. But my first transaction, one of my first transactions, I bought a hat from Crypto Clothing Whale out in um, California. And Charlie Lee and Coinbase took our transaction because because uh, Clothing Whale broadcast our transaction on the Coinbase Commerce. It was when they created Coinbase Commerce. I should back up. Um, so they just had created Coinbase Commerce. Um, and I bought buy this hat, pay with Litecoin hat, right? Uh, Clothing Whale takes our receipt, digital copy, and broadcast it on Twitter. Well, Coinbase, Charlie Lee, and uh, crazy amounts of people retweeted this. I spent like a week with my phone. I'd have to shut it off at night because it was just still buzzing. <laughs> That's what it felt like. I mean, literally for like a couple <laughs> days, all it did was buzz. Because it's currency. You should spend this. On-chain transactions benefit the whole system. It shows people how to use sure. it. It makes people excited. And this is the, the direction we're all heading. But sometimes it might, it, it, I look at it as it like helps to create the ecosystem if you think about it. Because if, let's say a merchant decides to take cryptocurrency, right? That merchant's been on the US dollar or whatever currency he's, they've been on, right? Visa, so on and so forth for so long, right? And now all of a sudden that merchant starts taking on crypto as payment. That merchant now has, if he chooses to keep crypto as his investment or as his receipt, then he now has crypto to be able to eventually pay his employees with it or to put it back into the you know economy of cryptocurrencies as well so it's just it's like that fluid chain that starts to move that engine that starts to turn without that i don't think i think it would take if we didn't do this i think it would take exponentially amounts of time longer to make it happen absolutely because the merchants need to see it they need to have it and understand what, what the power is. Even if they uh, immediately, say, use a lion and they immediately transfer into USD, at least they have touched it and understand the principle. I just think that in the future, I don't think they're all gonna be doing that. I think what you're saying is right. I think they're gonna hold a portion back, which is what something I would uh, recommend. You hold a, hold a portion back, offer it to your employees or your suppliers. That's how this whole thing grows. And we all know that it's a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. There is no loss. There is no third party that takes a piece just because they could. Um, so I think that's where, you know, this moves everything forward. Well, and I think, you know, kind of like we talked about on the show with Todd the other day, most of the adoption from the retail side is really gonna take place when the major payment processing companies for e-commerce type payments start integrating crypto. And I know there's plugins and stuff that make this possible now, but when, when it's really truly supported by the mainstream companies that handle that, that's when we're gonna really see the deep adoption. And for that to be a smooth process, we need to have these retailers already exposed to them, like you said. So just using it now gets, gets them in that door and it opens up the possibility so that when it becomes the thing and what people use, period, they're ready for it. And there's some of them that are gonna be ahead of the game and they're going to be sitting real pretty, ready to go. And there's some of them that are going to be late because that's how it always works. And they're going to be feeling it. So, um, 
I don't know. It's just all part of building that up. Yeah. When the companies like Amazon think about uh, or actually get statistics from how many people are using Moon plugin and they're buying stuff from Amazon. Once people realize that, and maybe the major corporations realize it, then, you know, this keeps moving forward. Yeah. When, when people start seeing other people make money, they wonder why, and they want to know how they can also make that kind of money. And so then they look into it and then they start taking crypto. You know, I mean, it's a whole nother revenue stream and it's only a matter of time until it becomes a mainstream deal. Absolutely. You know, I agree. And, and, and that's why I choose to, to use crypto. You know, it's like Clint says all the time, it's sound money. Why wouldn't I not want to use it? Right. And it's so not hurting the American dollar right now. Well, that's for sure. Uh, I think that's going to collapse on itself here before too long. But, um, you know, to change gears a little bit, J-Mac, I, I know you're, you're working with CoinFlip now to um, sell or to help put out crypto ATMs, CoinFlip ATMs. How's that going? Man, it's going good. Uh, I've had a lot of conversations, a lot of DMs with people um, pretty much all over the United States. Actually, a couple that were out of the United States. Um, and it's going good. Uh, things take a little time to get momentum moving, but uh, things are going good. I got my email set up. Anybody interested in, in uh, getting uh, email, or I'm sorry, getting a, a machine at their location can email me. Uh, can I plug my email? Yeah. Go for it. Uh, it's Jason M at sales.coinflip.tech. And we'll, uh, I'll put it in the comments. Awesome. Cool. I mean, Daniel and Dustin are just, amazing dudes i was so glad that we got to hang out with daniel in, in uh st louis yeah and one of these days we'll we'll scoop dustin up too and we'll go out and have a good time but oh yeah oh yeah see once once we get this freedom we all deserve this freedom we all need this freedom to be able to do those kind of things and we're in the we're in such early stages right now that we're building that freedom right and it will not be long before we are given that freedom to be able to hey Perf, where you at, man? Let's let's hook up. Let's go grab uh, you know, Dustin, and let's go grab Daniel, and we might swing by and pick up J Mac and Clint. And let's go down here for a couple of days, and we're gonna we're gonna do a meetup, right? We're just gonna make a meetup happen down in Orlando or uh, somewhere in Aruba or whatever. So let's go. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's going to happen. We are going to be moving, and we are gonna be all over the place. So that's gonna be insane, and I, I'm. I, I'm really stoked about that. I mean, just the potential of what we all stand to gain from this in the long term in this whole movement is pretty huge. Seriously, the relationships and and people that we're going to meet from this and experiences that we're going to have are just, I mean, I can't even imagine. I just can't wait until we all have that opportunity to start going around, you know, traveling the world and hooking up with all these people we've been talking to and just trying to spread the word of crypto everywhere. You know, it's going to be great. And we're going to be able to, to meet a lot of amazing people. And, and I hope maybe uh, help them discover the crypto world. Yeah. Speaking of amazing people, uh, Nana just sent me four of her books that she's written. Uh, actually, three, two of one for my kids. Um, that's what this whole uh, group is, is about. You have a, a ton of people that are willing to share and just want to be involved and talk to people. And it's just an amazing group of people. Seriously, you are not kidding. And uh, yeah, now I'm glad we got to meet Nana in St. Louis too. She's, she's an awesome person. What a wonderful soul. So J-Mac, what's the weirdest smell you have ever smelled? Ooh. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Ooh, that smell. Oh, that's a good one. Get to smell that smell. Oh, that is a good tune. That's a good tune. It is. Um, the weirdest smell. <laughs> weirdest smell. Um, okay. So the machines at my company, my, I work for a parts supplier uh, for Ford, Nissan, and Honda. Um, Okay. And we have the oils will be used for, say, about a three-month period. And then we have an oil company come in and pump them out. Well, oil is a uh, organic base. And let's just say it gets rotten. So, yeah, that was probably the weird, Ew. nasty smell I've ever smelled. Ugh. And I got I to gotta smell it all the time. 
So fun. that's it's not fun. <laughs> it's just not a good example. Can we can we go with a good smell? Sure. What is the best smell you've ever smelled? The best smell. Hmm. I'm not gonna touch that. Yeah, I was gonna say, you know what? <laughs> yeah, we can't maybe, talk maybe about the best I smell. Open up a can of worms. I don't want to open. <laughs> <laughs> the best non-biological smell. I know how Mitch is. The best non-biological smell, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Does that count? Is that even, yeah, is that even possible? Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> like I can think of, I can think of one when I was when I was in the military. You know, we had. Um, tanks right and i was attached to a tanker outfit on the m1 abrams and you know in the mornings in the desert it's like really freaking cold so the 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 squad would back their tanks into each other into this circle and they would fire up the tanks and let them run and the jets you know from the from the exhaust from the tank would create this big heat pocket in in the center of this circle right so we'd all in the morning, we'd all set our coffee cups out on the, on the, on the burners on the back and heat up our coffee and we'd all stand around shooting the shit. Well, the smell of a military operation is so unique because of all the JP4 that's being burned and it gives off this unique smell. So it's like anytime I smell it or smell like a diesel fuel, it just brings back all those memories. It's, it's really unique. So I, I guess I would have to pick that. That's a good one. That I mean, that, that like sharp thing that it's got. I don't know. It's a, uh, it's a good smell. It's unique. Yeah. Mine is sure. racing fuel. Now that now that I've figured it out. Now that Mitch talked about fuel, uh, racing fuel from the hot rods, man. The unspent yes. fuel from the big motors, the big shakers. Yep. Oh my goodness. That's a good one. That's a good. Yeah. You know, just the drag strip in general. Oh man, that's all smooth. the smells, the rubber, the gasoline, man. Good times. Good times. Good times on that smell. So, J Mac. Yes, sir. If you could replace your feet with any household <laughs> item, what would it be? Oh, crap. Um, <laughs> flubber. Flubber. <laughs> flubber. <laughs> yeah, because we all have <laughs> flubber in our house. <laughs> yeah. Come on, professor. <laughs> they call yeah. me the professor for a reason. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> For what application? Is it just for home stuff or is it? It's whatever you want it to be. Well, that was the next part is what would you use it for? <laughs> what would well, you do with it? If I could replace my feet, of course, I'd go with a motorized, say, any type of motorized scooter or anything like that. Um, no. Okay. That way I could be mobile and get out there and talk to people still. I mean, that's one of my big things is I hate getting um, in a point where I couldn't get out and talk to people. So I think that's probably what I'd go with. So like a motorized embedded Heelys. That would be sweet. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Wolverine, but with Heelys. Go, go, Gadget Feet. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Oh, oh that's yeah. funny. J-Mac, it's been fun having you on the show today, brother. I think this was a really good conversation. It was really solid. Well, I appreciate it, man. And like I said, I love coming on your guys' show. I, I love what you guys are doing. I love that you're bringing the community together. Um, you know, and it's super cool that I've met you both. And uh, I think you guys are doing an awesome thing. And I would come on for the 10th show if you wanted me to. <laughs> Damn straight, man. Oh, and and yeah. same goes to you, man. Your, your J-Mac moments and everything you're doing, trying to spread adoption and just talking to people and, and welcoming the new people is, is amazing. So keep it up, man. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. We're all doing our part. We are all doing our part and we all have a part. Um, and a big shout out to CoinFlip ATM and the whole CoinFlip team. You guys are doing an amazing job. Keep doing that. Um, J-Mac, keep doing you, bro. Thank you, sir. And I'm going to. I can't do anybody else. I'd do Mitch if I could, but my voice isn't right. Wait, wait, hey. Wait a minute, that sounded wrong, place. didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> hey, you no, hate that? Nope. I'll let you take that back. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. It's what too I late. meant to too say late. is it's I can't do Mitch's there. voice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Have a great day, bro. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Give the big fam a love, man. All right, everybody, be cool. Take it easy, man. Peace, Jay. Peace out. Yeah, man, that was an amazing podcast. Jay Max always a good time. Oh, he is. It, it, totally, totally a good time. And, you know, he's just so supportive of the campfire. I, I can't get over that, and I, I can't thank him enough for, for all that he does for us. No, I love it. He's, he's always out there. He's blazing trails left and right, man. 
you know, and it's it's not just J Man. It's it's this it's our entire community, bro. The, I the mean, crypto community as a whole right now is on fire. Just yeah, just promoting the whole shittery, man. It's crazy. I love it. I'm getting excited. Something oh, big yeah. is coming. Oh, it is. It is. It's got to be because the buzz is just getting louder every day. It's incredible. I can't wait. You guys keep it up. Keep spreading the word. And now the actual Deegans are are starting to get on board with the seed movement. <laughs> that's great. Did you see that? I did. I, I mean, oh my God, dude, that's going to be insane. They're going to be out there all day, every day. They're, they're going to be out there planting so many seeds that they're going to forget about Twitter. I could see them now. I could see every time Fairy goes into a porn shop, he's going to be stuffing seeds in the cards. Oh, God. <laughs> in the, in no, the magazines no, no. and Fairy, shit. Don't do it. <laughs> no, nobody needs that. Uh, Plant your seeds elsewhere. Every time you rent a movie, the first thing you're going to see is a cryptocurrency <laughs> card pop up on the screen. <laughs> be your own bank. <laughs> Well, thanks guys for coming and listening to the show. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you enjoyed hearing from J Mac. Thank you again for listening. Thank you for supporting us. You guys have been amazing. The merch store is doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all of that. And yeah, keep your eyes open. We're going to be coming out with some new stuff here pretty quick. Um, one other note, we are now affiliates of uh, Z bones. So if you'd like to get a Z bone headset, and maybe uh, use it to come on to our podcast or listen to our podcast. Uh, it's a pretty convenient way of, of having an, a headset that doesn't interfere with your normal ear, um, goes through the bone, and allows you to still hear your surroundings. So, you know, look into that. Check it out. We got a link on our website. Uh, feel free to click on that link, and um, the proceeds from that will help the campfire in, spre in spreading adoption and continuing to do what we love to do. Definitely, guys, check it out, and we will see you in Los Angeles. That's right, L.A. next week. You guys have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Take it easy. Peace. <laughs>